the doctor made an astonishing discovery, revealing a hidden secret in a woman who had been in a coma for a year. Something that will leave you amazed. This incident occurred in a small town in San Vicente Carmen. The nurse responsible for intensive care discovered something incredible during monitoring in that specialized ward, conducting a routine check on a patient, whose health was surprisingly unexpected, considering it was believed she had been induced into a coma for three months. However, over a year had passed, and her health was deteriorating without explanation. Continuing her routine assessments, the nurse suddenly noticed a rapid heartbeat in the patient, catching her attention and leaving her extremely surprised. Continuing her thorough examination, she triggered an alarm among her hospital colleagues, letting out a piercing cry and informing the on-duty doctors to witness this extraordinary discovery, something no one could have imagined or forgotten. Immediate notice was given to relevant local authorities, initiating a series of procedures involving all staff in the medical institution, causing a stir throughout the entire city. Rosa, an 18-year-old young woman, has been in a coma for a year. She's remarkably beautiful and works as a model, although not widely recognized, living with her mother and stepfather. She feels uneasy due to his excessive control. Rosa ended up in the intensive care unit after a severe car accident. According to police reports, she veered off the road due to speeding and collided with several large trees. Found unconscious with a severe head injury. Luckily, the damage was superficial. Identified through her documents, authorities located her family and informed them. Her mother and stepfather rushed to the hospital upon hearing the news. Further interventions were needed and the doctors proposed inducing a three-month coma to expedite Rosa's recovery. Her mother accepted the terms, taking on the expenses for treatment, surgery, and hospitalization. Despite the passing time, there's been no improvement in Rosa's condition. Her mother seeks explanations, yet the doctors are puzzled. The surgery was successful, and Rosa should have awakened months ago. Her mother continues visiting with her stepfather. Occasionally, she brings along plants, fruits, and sweets Rosa enjoys, placing them by her bedside with affectionate hope for her awakening. She longs for Rosa to wake up, hoping she'll find comfort and joy in the things she loves once she does. Sometimes, she visits alone, while at other times, her stepfather makes solitary visits to the young girl. Everything seems so ordinary and routine because she's just asleep. The doctors and nurses harbor sympathy for her, showing extra care since she arrived at the hospital. One nurse, in particular, has a special concern for Rosa. Kelly, the nurse, feels a connection due to her own daughter being around the same age as Rosa. She tirelessly tries to offer love and care to Rosa, holding her hand, engaging in conversation, gently caressing her, and reminding her mother to visit often with things she loves. Kelly's hope is for Rosa to respond in some way to all the stimuli, knowing she's a young, beautiful girl who deserves every chance in life. However, Kelly doesn't trust Rosa's stepfather, finding his behavior odd and suspicious, making everyone uncomfortable whenever he's around. Kelly had to leave the hospital for a month to attend overseas training. Regrettably, she had to leave her beloved Rosa under the care of other nurses. She knew no one would care for Rosa like she did. She regularly communicated with the nurses on duty, inquiring about Rosa's condition. But the response was always the same, everything was normal. And she was sleeping peacefully. A month later, upon Kelly's return to the hospital, after exchanging greetings with colleagues, she entered the room of her beloved Rosa, only to find a scene that shocked her deeply. She saw the stepfather alone in the room tampering with the monitors Rosa relied on. Witnessing this scene filled Kelly with curiosity and suspicion. She noticed the patient's sad expression, began comforting her by holding her hand, and informed her that she was back. Kelly proceeded with routine assessments but decided on a comprehensive examination. Attempting to lift the covers off Rosa, she discovered a slight abnormal lump on her abdomen. Something that shouldn't have been there. Shocked. She started to touch it and couldn't believe what she found. Without hesitation, she called in the attending doctor, 
informing them of the lump on the patient's abdomen, expressing her suspicions. Doctors were surprised to perform an ultrasound, thinking Rosa might have inflammation or organs in critical condition. But when they got an ultrasound, they got a shock because Rosa had a baby in her abdomen. Yes, Rosa was pregnant. The doctors were baffled. She had been in a coma for a year. So how could this happen? The why were utterly shocked and decided to maintain silence. Prohibiting visits. Claiming that visiting wasn't recommended due to the patient's compromised immune system. The hospital director was reluctant to get involved and, along with the medical team, decided to transfer the patient to another hospital. However, upon learning about the hospital's silence, internal meetings among the doctors, and the decision to transfer, someone anonymously tipped off the local authorities. The police arrived at the hospital's central office but swiftly departed, mysteriously erasing the anonymous report without initiating any procedures. The hospital remained silent for days until it became known internally that Rosa's pregnancy was nearing nine months. Nurse Kelly discovered that the authorities had been bribed to avoid investigating the truth behind Rosa's pregnancy. A few days later, the doctors decided to perform a cesarean section, extracting the baby from the unconscious young woman's womb. Kelly participated in the surgery, and to everyone's disbelief, the newborn appeared healthy, with no major risks of complications. The doctors prepared to suture the wound, send the baby to the neonatal ward, and planned to transfer both of them to a distant facility. This was to cover up the pregnancy incident and eliminate any evidence shielding the hospital from lawsuits. Feeling shocked and fearful, Kelly decided this time to openly disclose the situation to the prosecutor, accusing the managing doctors of being aware of it. In that moment, the nurse summoned courage and brought the newborn into Rosa's room. Kelly opened Rosa's clothing, placing the infant on her chest. The baby started crying, seeking nourishment, while Kelly held her hand, pleading for her to wake up, perhaps before she had no specific purpose. But now she had a child. If Rosa didn't awaken, Kelly planned to take the baby to an orphanage. As her mother remained unaware she was now a grandmother. In this suspenseful moment, a doctor burst in due to the baby's cries. Witnessing the scene, recognizing the situation, and attempting to remove Kelly and the baby from the room to prevent a massive uproar. Kelly cried out in despair begging Rosa to awaken. It was then, as if miraculously, the young girl opened her eyes. The baby began to cry louder. A miraculous sight witnessed by everyone. Thanking God. More nurses entered the room where the cries came from. Everyone was astounded as they witnessed the awakening of the young girl from her coma. Before long, the prosecutor arrived with a police team to conduct a timely and necessary investigation into the case. As they sought evidence during their investigation, the case became exposed in the media. People supporting Rosa's situation called for justice. When Rosa was able to state, she recounted being harassed by her stepfather from the age of 14, the date her mother was engaged to her stepfather. She also said she drove home on the afternoon of the accident to tell her mother what had happened. The stepfather had been chasing her for four years, and at the time of the accident, his pursuit at excessive speed caused her car to lose control, thus proving it. According to the nurse's testimony, she witnessed her stepfather operating machines in the ward and experimenting with drug samples. The drugs were found to have been altered by the stepfather, who injected a solution in addition to the prescribed medication to keep the young girl in a coma. As a result of the investigation, the hospital was asked to provide the corridor security cameras involved. A list of doctors who had contact with the stepfather and records of meetings and contacts. Soon, progress was made in the investigation. And it was discovered that Rosa's infant father was her stepfather. He had bad intentions from the time he met this young girl, a girl at the time. In the end, he tearfully confessed. Acknowledging that he was driven by his own base impulses. Committing this unimaginable crime. And exploiting the innocence of the young girl. Eventually, the hospital was shut down and fined, and the stepfather, along with the hospital, paid a substantial amount in civil compensation. Additionally, 
The stepfather received a lengthy prison sentence. That's today's story. I hope you enjoyed it. Remember to like this. So you can receive more stories like this. Until next time. The following story is equally wonderful. Let's continue. He approached the house and glanced at the closed curtains through the windows. Contentedly smiling. It meant his wife was still asleep. He could now quietly enter the apartment and sleep. So that when she woke up. She would find him beside her. Six months ago. He met Angela. Completely captivated by her. He was enchanted by this woman. Desiring to see her every day. However. There was a problem. He was already married. His wife was the daughter of a wealthy entrepreneur. With businesses spanning the globe, factories, hotels, resorts, and res. Taurants. Valerio understood that to live well. One needed bold confidence. Yet. This hadn't brought him much success. So. He decided to do whatever it took to get to know Ophelia and. If possible. Pursue and marry her. Everything went perfectly. Ophelia was a modest. Unspoiled girl, not a breathtaking beauty. But not unattractive either. Valerio liked her because she candidly admitted her poverty. Planning to work hard for everything in life. Love wasn't part of his plan. He simply needed to beguile her. He knew conquering such a girl was difficult. There would be many competitors like him. But everything succeeded. He quietly opened the door and entered the living room. Removing his shoes. He placed the keys on the bedside table. Taking off his coat. Opening the door to the living room. Ophelia sat in an armchair. Puffing smoke rings. Wearing a mocking expression. Valerio and his friend Dionysius sat in the cafe. Silently sipping their coffees. Each lost in their own thoughts. The boss is driving us crazy. Complaining about trivial matters incessantly. I can't take it anymore. I might quit. Said Dionysius. His emotions difficult to control. What? Finding this job wasn't easy. Without experience. Who would hire us? You know how tough everything is nowadays. So. Hold on a bit. Don't despair. Let's at least endure a year. By then. I feel we might find something better. You know. I've been considering something. We need to find a wealthy woman to marry. It'd make things easier for us. It's the only way now. Neither of us is lucky. Our parents aren't wealthy. We have to struggle for our lives. Like me. I don't want to be idle. But I also don't want a low-paying job. Otherwise. We'll end up like our ancestors. Barely scraping by. Of course. A wealthy woman would look at you like that. Wanting to marry a failure. She'd want someone like her. So there's no choice here. Well, we'll see. It all depends on me. Oh, do you already have your eye on a girl? I don't want to waste time on the subway. Especially when traveling. Having your own car feels better. Even better if you have a chauffeur to drive you while you sit back and enjoy the journey. Oh, that's too far-fetched. Having a chauffeur. I'd settle for having my own car. But first, I have to earn the money. To buy a car. I'd have to go without eating drinking, or sleeping for two years. Dionysius. I don't want that. Recently, I came up with a plan. I found out that bald-headed tycoon's daughter is in her fifth year at university. She's a humble, somewhat introverted girl, not dating anyone. So I plan to get closer to her. It's useless. Won't work. There are already plenty of suitors. It's all in vain. That's what you say. But I have a plan. Let's see what happens. On her way back from university. Ophelia thought about the upcoming reception she had to attend. She disliked enduring these events. But her father insisted the whole family must attend. There will be journalists there. Daughter. I hope they get to see you. You'll be there with your Alicia. You know I don't like her. I'd rather trade your mother for her. I don't understand you. Dad. She's as foolish as a cork. Why are you interested in her? Well. I like her. And even if your mother isn't as foolish as you say. She can't keep the family together. So. It seems she isn't that clever. Dad. Your personality is sometimes complicated. Dealing with you isn't easy. And mom has had enough. K. 
Can't you understand her? Let's not talk about it. I'm tired. You have to attend the reception. Don't make excuses. It won't be accepted. Walking in the park. She noticed a small cat meowing from a tree branch. Afraid to come down. She approached. Attempting to retrieve it but found herself unable. Don't be scared. Little one. I'll figure something out. Scanning the area. She noticed a boy walking on the sidewalk. Engrossed in his phone. Young man. Could you help me? Something's wrong. There's a cat up in the tree. Very scared. We need to get it down. I tried but couldn't. Can you try? No problem. I can use my phone for support. Please wait. Five minutes later. Ophelia held the cat in her arms. Thank you so much. I couldn't manage it alone. But I don't know what to do now. I can't take it home. But I can't leave it here either. What should we do then? Let me take it home. It would be a shame to leave it here. Will you take care of it? After all. It owes you one. By the way. I'm Valerio. And you? I'm Ophelia. Nice to meet you. It's great you happened by and saved this cat. And now you're taking it away. So. It might owe you. Not me. Right? If it weren't for you. Honestly. I might have just walked away. I didn't even hear it. Completely focused on my work. So. It should be your credit. Where do you work? I work at a nearby small company. I just graduated from college and found a job. I'm still studying to impress my boss. That's admirable. I haven't finished my studies yet. I might work for my father. He won't. Let me go anywhere else. Who's your father? Ophelia looked surprised at the boy. She thought everyone knew her father. As they often appeared together in newspapers. Everyone recognized him. But this boy seemed uninterested in the wealthy lifestyle. Which she liked. He owns his own company and wants me to work there. That's awesome. My parents are regular engineers. They've always worked. Teaching me self-reliance. Not to depend on anyone. I must go. I've kept you too long. But I insist you go see the cat. Let me give you my number. I'll text you where I live. Ophelia hesitated. Valerio seemed different from the boys pursuing her. She could immediately tell who was interested in her and who just wanted her father's money. She took out her notebook and quickly wrote down her number. There you go. Call me anytime if you need anything. Valerio walked home satisfied. Pleased that the first stage went smoothly. Now he had her phone number. Of course. The cat was utterly unimportant to him. But he had to do it. Otherwise. He wouldn't have a chance to get to know her. It took him nearly half an hour to safely return the kitten to the low branches of the tree. Ensuring it meowed loud enough for Ophelia to hear. Although Valerio thought that in such a situation. He'd ask a stranger girl to watch his things while he climbed up to rescue the kitten. He believed this act would also touch the heart of that stranger girl. Namely Ophelia. So. He spent all his savings renting an apartment near that park because he knew Ophelia often visited there after returning from university. The expenses were substantial. But he was confident it would all be worth it. That evening. He sent her the address but didn't call because he thought it might seem too pushy. He couldn't afford even the slightest mistake. It meant too much. Ophelia was on a date. Eager for it to end. Her phone rang. Glancing at it. She received a text with an address. She expected Valerio to call. Inviting her over or telling her to come see the kitten. But her phone remained silent. Which surprised her. He's different from the others. Seems genuinely unaware of who I am. I like that. I'm tired of fools willing to do anything for my father's money. Ophelia hoped she'd eventually be lucky enough to find someone interested in her heart. Not her father's wallet. She wished for such a thing to happen because she had learned to discern people. At least she felt she understood what others expected of her. So. She didn't date. Anyone. Though she envied friends who had complete love lives and lived according to their own wishes. She didn't dare take the risk. Unsure why. Perhaps it was innate shyness or fear of causing trouble if her father found out. Undoubtedly. Her father would find out. And Ophelia feared what would happen when he did. Arriving home in the evening. She remembered the text. Rereading it. 
she decided to call Valerio herself, using the excuse of inquiring about the situation and the kitten's well-being. Hi. Valerio. Sorry to disturb you at this late hour. I hope I didn't wake you. Speaking. Her palms were sweaty, trying to infuse her voice with a casual tone, as if she called only about the kitten. She hoped Valerio would believe her because she truly didn't want to be found out. She said, I won't disturb your work. Or maybe. Sorry. Am I disturbing you? Good night. Valerio didn't want to disturb their conversation. But he held himself together. Saying goodbye before ending the call. Indeed. He knows nothing about me. Treating me like an ordinary friend. I feel he might not even like me. Thought Ophelia. Though she didn't quite like the idea of someone potentially not being interested in her. Tomorrow. I'll ask to go to his place to see the kitten. By the way. We haven't named it yet. Hmm. I'll use that as an excuse. Valerio tidied up his apartment. Making it look more organized. He hadn't slept all night. Though it didn't bother him much. He needed to show Ophelia his lifestyle. Making her feel like he was constantly working. Why do you need all this? Denisio asked during their lunch break at the cafe. She won't care if you've slept or not. I think that's inconsequential to her. First. She'll see that I strive for achievements in life. Second. She'll understand I don't have as much money right now. Can't take her out to restaurants and cafes like she's used to. Do you get it? If you're a cunning fox. Wow. You've anticipated everything. Well done. But do you really think she'd be so foolish not to notice anything? Actually. Women can sense if they're loved. Of course. And truthfully. I didn't leave a cent here. Just left a bit for lunch and got some milk for the kitten. Though honestly. I really want to kick it out. I can't stand cats. As for what women can sense. Those are all lies. Once a woman falls in love. She sees and hears nothing else. So. My task is to make her fall deeply in love with me as soon as possible. Around 2 p.m. Ophelia called Valerio. Hi. Valerio. Hope I'm not disturbing. Ophelia. Glad to hear your voice. Unfortunately. I'm busy working right now. Don't have much time to chat. Can you make it quick? What's up? Valerio even startled himself with his words. Feeling he had gone overboard. She might hang up now. Not call again. What would happen next? Valerio. Why would you make plans when you're so busy? Ophelia felt puzzled. No one had ever spoken to her like this. But she restrained herself. Yesterday. You suggested going to see the kitten. But I don't understand. Why invite me when you're this busy? Sorry. I completely forgot about the kitten. Work. You know. Please forgive me once more. I'll be home by 7 tonight. So come over. I'll be waiting for you. Ophelia agreed to go. And Valerio breathed a sigh of relief. He nearly messed everything up. He needed to be more careful with her because she was a determined person. He thought. Ophelia smiled at her reflection in the mirror. Wearing a carefully chosen bright yellow dress that suited her. She let her long hair down. Styling some gentle curls with a curling iron. Now softly cascading over her shoulders. Overall. She liked how she looked. A rare occurrence. I'm sure I'll catch his attention now. Won't go unnoticed elsewhere. Wow. At first. I was mad because he didn't pay attention to me. Initially. I thought he'd be calling me incessantly. After all. I gave him my number. But it turned out. I was the one always calling him. He never called me. Well. Let's see how it goes now. Maybe he'll start calling after seeing me today. Valerio opened the door. Surprised to see Ophelia. She managed to surprise him today. He thought. Yes. She could even be called quite beautiful. I think I don't even have to make an effort. There doesn't seem to be any obvious dislike. He pretended to control his emotions. Saying. Please come in. No, but don't be surprised. My place is a bit messy. My mind is solely focused on work. Sometimes I don't even have time to tidy up. Ophelia felt content. She saw that her appearance had left a strong impression on Valerio. I'm here for the kitten. Not to inspect your lifestyle. So don't worry about that. Besides. 
I understand everything. Living alone. And always being busy. The kitten's been named Barsika. Ophelia sat on the sofa. The kitten curled up on her lap. Fast asleep. It's so adorable. But I can't take it home. I asked my father for a cat or a dog before. But he forbade it. So. I don't have pets. Even though I love them. Maybe you should talk to your mom about it. I think she might be able to persuade your father. Valerio suggested. My parents divorced a long time ago. And he didn't give it to her. I think it was out of spite. I love her. But she couldn't stand his unbearable temper. So she initiated the divorce. My father wasn't upset about it. He cut off my contact with my mother. Didn't let her see me. Later. She left. Maybe she has a new family now. Maybe not. I don't know. It's interesting. Like you. Don't you want to see her again? After all. You're an adult now. You could go see her on your own. Not because. As I've grown up. I've come to realize more and more that a mother shouldn't leave her children. She could have endured and lived with my father. Now. Talking to you and telling this story. I realize what happened. Listening to Ophelia. Valerio pondered her intelligence and emotional control. If I don't put in more effort for her. This might not be so easy. He thought. I need to consider other ways to make her more attached to me. You know. I completely agree with your perspective. Sometimes. Women need to adapt to their men. After all. Men's situations are tougher. Always thinking about how to earn money to provide for their wives and children, if any, with gifts. Women tend to trust their men more after marriage because they see them as providers. But at the same time. They demand attention from men. Even if sometimes you're too tired to eat after coming home from work. In my family. There's a story similar to yours. Mom was always tired of constantly comforting dad. Supporting him in everything. Despite her own relentless work. When she got home. She did the laundry. Cleaned. And helped me with homework. Dad would watch TV and then complain that mom wasn't giving him attention. I remember there was a big argument. Mom even wanted a divorce. But dad reflected on it. And they're still together. It's interesting. When people get married. They don't really understand each other. Love is a chemical reaction. But over time. It gradually fades. To keep the family. One must learn immediately how to understand each other. Support one another and find common ground. Valerio himself couldn't understand how it happened. But they both realized that their conversations had carried on until late at night. Ophelia also realized it was time to head home. This was the first time she had stayed out so late. Should I accompany you? It's too dangerous to walk alone at th. Is our. Do you live far? Not far. But I think it'd be quicker and safer to call a cab. Valerio felt perplexed because he didn't have the money to pay for a cab and didn't know how to tell Ophelia. She said. It's okay. Don't worry. I can cover the transportation cost myself. Naively. I thought you'd want to chat a bit more with me. After all. It's the first time in my life I've talked with a girl. I was always clueless. Not liking their behavior and way of speaking. Then you came along. So beautiful and smart. And I even lost track of time. Valerio. I'm sorry. I also wanted to stay longer with you. But walking will take time. And I don't want my dad to worry about me rushing. Causing trouble for both of us. So. I'd rather take a cab. I'm sorry. Valerio. It's a bit embarrassing to say. But I won't lie. I don't have money for the cab fare. Recently. I donated all my money to a stray dog shelter. I can't ignore those abandoned souls. They can't lack anything. So now. I have no money at all. Valerio. You're truly remarkable. Believe me. You don't need to be embarrassed about anything. You didn't waste that money. Instead. You donated it to a great cause. As for me. I can pay for my own transportation. So everything's okay. He lay in bed. Thinking things weren't that bad. It seemed he had successfully attracted her. And this time she was hooked and wouldn't escape. He would have to spend more time with her. Pretending to enjoy her company only as a friend. Meanwhile. Ophelia couldn't sleep. 
she was thinking about the night they spent together with Valerio, finding herself increasingly fond of him, but some things worried her. She noticed he simply didn't like her, even when she dressed in her finest clothes to meet him. It didn't seem to make the impression she hoped for. Although initially, she thought she saw a glimmer in his eyes. It vanished afterward. Since then, she hadn't received any male attention. All right, what's your plan now? Everything's going as planned. I'll invite her for a walk in the park. I can tell she needs company. She enjoys talking with me. So, I'll use that and make her fall for me temporarily. I understand. By the way, I saw a picture of her with her father at some event in the newspaper. She's very beautiful. Yes, but she's just not my type. I prefer blondes. I've never liked dark-haired women. That's the irony of fate. I must make her fall for me. Even though I can't stand her. Have zero interest in her. As a woman. She does. And appeal to me at all. If she were the only person on earth. I wouldn't even approach her. That's why it's so difficult for me. If she were blonde. Everything would be different. But that's another story. So. Do you plan to marry her? After all. You'll have to live together. Sleep together. And then there will be children. I don't understand. I don't want to marry her. I want to marry her money. You don't understand. I'll use that money to find another woman I love and live a simple life with her. Trust me. She won't leave. She'll endure it. If she finds out. Then during the divorce. I'll take half of the property. So. I've calculated it all. I've foreseen everything. Although that's far away. Right now I need to make her fall for me. They now met every day. Ophelia couldn't imagine how she lived before Valerio. She had fallen in love with him and wished he would always be by her side. If he didn't call or write. She'd worry. She tried calling herself and did everything possible to arrange a date. Despite starting to work with her father after graduating from college. Her thoughts were always elsewhere. Thinking about him. What can I do to make him fall in love with me like I am with him? She wondered. I see he just likes me. Nothing more. Should I tell him the truth? Am I extremely wealthy? No. Then he would fall in love with the money. Not me. Ophelia's father noticed something amiss with his daughter and decided to find out what was happening. She didn't try to lie and confessed everything to her father. After listening. Her father thought the boy might not be bad. He had a responsibility to help his daughter. As his existence in this world was to ensure her happiness. Invite him to our restaurant. Tell him I want to meet him. Dad. He won't come. Another boy might. But not Valerio. So we need to figure out something else. How about I take him to the park? You know. It's close to my apartment. We often go there together. And you could coincidentally run into us. And I'll introduce you. They walked silently along the path. And Valerio recounted his day's experiences. Yesterday. I worked until very late. Around four in the morning. Sorry. I couldn't even make a call. I never had the time. As Ophelia turned. Valerio saw a mature man walking toward them. And his heart raced as he recognized Ophelia's father. Dad. She exclaimed. What are you doing here? I was doing something and was about to leave. Didn't expect to see you. How long has it been since we am? E.T. Since you moved out. You haven't come to see us. Dad. I see you every day at work. What more could seeing you signify? I want to talk to you. By the way. Aren't you going to introduce us? It's getting awkward now. Facing a young man. This is Valerio. And this is my dad. Mr. Valerio. Pleased to meet you. My daughter talks about you often. Mr. Valerio said. Looking intently at this handsome young man. He felt something was off. He felt like he knew this person. Knew a lot of things. Despite what his daughter told him being completely different. Pleased to meet you too. Sir. Because I need to know who my daughter is dating. I suggest we find a place to sit and have something to eat. I have an hour or two free. I hope you won't refuse. Valerio. Let's go. My dad never lets us off the hook. They sat in a beautiful restaurant. Valerio had heard of such places but had never been to one. 
He imagined what the prices would be like and was surprised when he saw the prices on the menu. They were too high. He remembered the reception they received when they entered. And he recalled that the owner of these restaurants happened to be Ophelia's father. He had never tasted such delicious food in his entire life. He felt uncomfortable but couldn't stop. Ophelia hardly touched her food and pushed the plate away. But Mr. Valerio wasn't any less than Valerio. He just seemed accustomed to such eating habits and was satisfying his hunger at the moment. Ophelia's father inquired about Valerio's life and work. And Valerio felt like he was being scrutinized. He answered succinctly. Choosing his words carefully. Knowing that his future depended on this. He didn't know what Ophelia's father told her about him at that moment. As Ophelia hadn't revealed any information to him then. When he saw that she continued to date him and her attitude towards him hadn't changed. He understood he had passed the test. How long would he continue dating her like this? Or have you changed your mind about marriage? This weekend. We'll go out together. I've decided I'll propose to her. Aren't you worried she might reject you? Actually. That's not my concern. She's crazy about me. Sometimes I find it funny. Sometimes disgusting. Especially everything she does to get me to kiss her. You can't imagine how annoying it is. I always thought all girls would kiss. But she just touches her lips to mine. I'm truly amazed. Such weddings have never happened in this city. Valerio proudly looked around. Knowing he. D won the top prize. They sat in a luxurious car heading to a restaurant. With Valerio looking at Ophelia. Now his wife. For only 10 minutes. She looks quite good today. He thought. So. I guess our wedding night is finally here. But before that. I need a drink. Ophelia felt both scared and excited about what would happen after the celebration. She read in romantic novels that at first. Everything would be awkward. But it would later become wonderful. She eagerly anticipated the intimate moments with her husband because she loved him wholeheartedly. She stepped out of the bathroom. Draped in a trembling robe. Valerio lay on the bed. Hands behind his head. Thinking about something. He looked at his wife and smiled. He was drunk and felt good. At that moment. Ophelia was not at all ugly to him. Come here. Dear. You can't imagine how long I've been waiting for this moment. Don't be shy. Drop the towel. Now. You're my wife. And I want to see you. Ophelia released her hands. And the towel fell to the ground. She stood completely naked in front of him. Valerio scrutinized her. Thinking about how perfect her figure was. His wife. He took her hand. Pulled her closer. Then placed her on the bed. And the wedding night was a success. Even beyond his expectations. Ophelia turned out to be a virgin. Which surprised him greatly. But he loved her figure and felt even more excited every time he saw her. Now. They lived in a luxurious apartment. Her father arranged a job for him. Bought a car. And Ophelia filled his wardrobe with fashionable clothes. Now you have the status you deserve. So please don't say anything anymore. Also. I want to apologize for not telling you about my identity from the beginning. I just assumed you knew who I was. And later realized you didn't read newspapers or watch television. You were just working hard. Striving to achieve success in this world. Well. How could I be angry with my little wife? I can't believe you told me. I was sure you would reject me. After all. I'm just an ordinary person who fell in love with a millionaire. Valerio had a separate office and was given a secretary. At the time his father-in-law said he was coming soon because the position was vacant and there were no special requirements for a secretary. At first. Valerio tried to come straight home from work. He likes having sex with Ophelia. He knows he doesn't love her and never will. But having sex with her is pretty good. Ophelia melted in her husband's arms. Unable to bell. Eve her happiness. After all. He really loves me. She thought. I never thought I'd be lucky. So many boys pursued me. And I chose the one I didn't even like at first. As usual. Valerio drove to work and entered his office. The meeting was already over. And when everyone left. He decided to go downstairs to the cafe for a cup of coffee. He had a splitting headache. 
assuming it was just low blood pressure and that coffee would help. The office door was knocked and then opened, revealing a blonde head. May I come in? Valerio? I'm your secretary. Angela. The headache disappeared instantly. He stared at her. Unable to look away. He always liked blonde girls. And this girl was like a beauty from a book. Please come in. Angela. Let's get acquainted. Tell me about yourself. Where are you from? Married or single? I'm single. With no plans to get married yet. I prefer an independent life. I don't think I'm ready for married life. Doing laundry for a husband doesn't suit me. Great. Let's go for a coffee. And I'll talk to you about your job responsibilities. Okay. Let's go. They began talking. Valerio couldn't take his eyes off her. Craving Angela intensely. However. At the same time. He realized that being caught admiring her would be a serious mistake. He would immediately inform his father-in-law. And his wonderful life would collapse. Angela made it clear that she was open to dating him while maintaining their work hierarchy. Now he needed to figure out how to deal with his wife. He couldn't fall asleep without her. Even though she couldn't control him. Sometimes she would call. Asking about the reasons for his late returns from work. He no longer desired his wife and was even disgusted by having a sexual relationship with her. Angela was all he could think about. He bought sleeping pills at the drugstore. During the day he pretended not to notice Angela. And at night they enjoyed each other until dawn. Every night now he went to dinner with his wife. And while pouring her tea. Secretly slipped her sleeping pills. When they reached the bedroom and he went to take a bath. She was asleep and he could meet his mistress with peace of mind. He opened the bedroom door and found Ophelia sitting on a chair. Smoking. Watching him. Waiting to see what she would say. She said nothing. Just smiled. Her thoughts veiled. Eventually. He decided to break the silence. Darling. Why aren't you sleeping? Yeah. It seems vitamin C won't lull me to sleep. Perhaps switch your sleeping. Pills for ascorbic acid. I tracked where you went that night. Yet you remained oblivious. Ophelia. I just have too much work to handle. Don't lie anymore. Valerio. I know I've been naive. But you also underestimated my father and me. After that meeting. My father investigated you. Talk to your friends. Remember him leaving? He now works for my father in another city. The idea of Angela becoming your secretary was mine. I just wanted to test my husband. By the way, she knows everything too. So no need to pretend. Ophelia. There's just one thing you need to understand. I've been influenced. I love you. But not right now. Darling. Leave the car keys here and walk away. We'll divorce. So don't worry. You can love and date whoever you want. Just not in this city. My father gives you 24 hours. And once that time's up. I don't want to see you here again. Also, I have no money, and you won't get anything in the divorce. Forget it. You had no money before, and you don't have any now. Leave. I don't want to see you. Maybe I should turn away. Joking with Ophelia's father is dangerous. But Valerio is still standing there. Various thoughts struggled in his mind. Eventually, he made a decision. Although trying to persuade his father-in-law scared him. After all, he wasn't there at the time. But if he could convince Ophelia. As she had fallen for him like a cat. Valerio took a step. And Ophelia watched him curiously. Valerio knelt in front of her. Starting to kiss her hand and knee. Ophelia. I love you. I don't know what happened. And Denisio. He's always been jealous of me. So he said those stupid things. Who do you believe? Him or me? Your husband? Ophelia leaned back slightly, gazing into his eyes. Valerio. All right. I understand you might not love me. The heart is uncontrollable. But why do you think I'm foolish? Do you believe that by kneeling and kissing my hand now, we can continue living happily? You'll deceive me. And I'll pretend everything's fine. No. Darling. Don't think about it. He stood up. And Valerio stood up immediately too. I need to pack some things. What things? Nothing here was bought with your money. You've been working for my father for nearly half a year. 
but I don't recall you ever giving me any money. Valerio muttered. All right. We'll see. She replied. But he knew deep down it was an empty threat. What could he do to that family? Absolutely nothing. He'd never do that. So. He had to leave with nothing. Walking onto the street. He sighed. Finn. Ding himself back at rock bottom. He had made a mistake. Not considering certain things he didn't understand. Everything seemed smooth as silk. But now. With such a huge mistake. He was even in another city. Why was life so unfair to him? After all. What had he done wrong? He hadn't even hit his wife. He just wanted a good life. Valerio glanced at his watch. He was in a hurry. Or else he wouldn't be able to leave. Ophelia looked at him disdainfully. Thinking that if he had at least a bit of affection for her. She might have turned a blind eye to everything. But not now. There would be no mercy.